Don't want to stay alive when you're 25. You know the song? Yeah. Okay. yeah. We're not going to do it, but thank you. Uh, Just a little reference point there. All the young dudes. <clears throat> so I wanted to write a song like Mata Hoople because I love Mata Hoople. So I wrote this little kind of Chuck Berry influenced song. And I loved this song very much and I had a good relationship with the song. Until... Well, let me tell you what the song's about first, okay? When we first started playing acoustically, we would always play the same punk rock clubs and rock and roll clubs that we had always played, but we'd come in with acoustic instruments, you know? <clears throat> and at this one particular club in uh, uh, Orlando, Florida, the promoter of the show was this young lady who looked just like Keith Richards, she did. <laughs> And uh, she didn't look like Keith Richards in 1972, you know, when he was a uh, elegantly wasted Keith Richards, beautiful Keith Richards, more like 87, 89 Keith Richards. <clears throat> and the 80s were hard on all of us, as we well know. I think we all had bad hair in the 80s, I, you know. <clears throat> Those of you who were alive during the 80s. Um, so anyway, uh, so she looked like Keith Richards, and uh, we would always go and play. We'd either play at the club after we were finished playing, or we'd go to a party or something to play. And uh, so she followed us to this uh, party because she was interested in the violin player that we had at the time. And uh, we're, so we were there jamming on this song. We're having a good time singing some stone song. And suddenly I hear this horrendous arrhythmic sound come from behind me. I turn around, and it's this young lady who looks like Keith Richards, but she's playing a pair of castanets, and she has no rhythm whatsoever. You know? <laughs> So if you can imagine uh, someone who looks like Keith Richards who epitomizes rhythm and uh, someone with no rhythm and a set of castanets, you'll realize what a horrible, nightmarish situation that was. <clears throat> so I wrote this song and the chorus goes, I like her better when she walks away, you know? <laughs> and uh, the thing about this song that was, uh, it was a nice little song until it ended up on President Bush's top 10 iPod list in the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was mortified, you know, I, was, I just, I, I really went into shock, you know, and uh, we stopped playing the song for a while, you know, and uh, just kind of really sat there, we wouldn't go outside for a long time, we changed our identities, and uh, just kind of tried to figure out what we had done in the past life to deserve such bad karma, you know. So since we realized he was leaving office, we decided we'd start playing the song again, and uh, we were very happy to play the Democratic National Convention uh, in Denver. Uh, so we feel we've kind of, you know, made up for some of our sins somewhere along the line. And uh, as I've said before, you know, it's great that he left office, I believe, but the drag of it, the drag of it is, is that he came back to Texas, you know. So. We're going to build a wall around Texas, all my Chicano brothers, you know, we're going to build a wall too. Um, so anyway, this song always goes out to Mr. Joe Strummer, because I miss Joe Strummer very much and people like him. Thank you very much. Let's have another big round of applause for Miss Amy Cook.